What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. March is here, and we're expecting a March event or, you know, an announcement of some sort from Apple's spring product reveals that historically happens every year. Now, there was earlier chatter that March 16th was a potential date for Apple's new products, but that's been squashed by Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who says it's not happening then, but then there still could be an announcement sometime in March. Now, it didn't happen last year because of the pandemic, but 2021 looks like when Apple will get back on track. So this is everything that we expect to see from Apple and also what we don't plan on seeing based on what we know so far, you know, just so you don't get your hopes up. I know, sad Apple. <laughs> Now, when spring is in the air, it's a strong sign that so are new iPads. All the rumors point to Apple releasing a new iPad Pro with the long rumored mini LED display. Digitimes reports that the 12.9 inch model will be the first to get the all new display with the expectation that the 11 inch iPad Pro might transition to it later on. But only the larger 12.9 will launch with mini LED and there's a possibility that the 11 inch model doesn't get it at all. Mini LED displays bring increased brightness, deeper blacks, and higher contrast ratio with improved power efficiency, and they're also less prone to screen burn-in with an even thinner design over Apple's current LCD panel, so it's a significant upgrade for Apple's iPad Pro that someone like my mom won't even notice, but I still love you, mama. Mm -hmm. Now, the iPad Pro lineup, this is expected to feature a new and faster A14X chip, plus bring support for 5G networks for models with cellular connectivity, the physical design is not expected to see any changes, but the big change on last year's model was the dual lens camera with the LiDAR sensor that people didn't take advantage of at all. Now, there's a small tweak that was unlocking one more additional GPU core, which resulted in a minor performance increase, but the biggest change wasn't even really the iPad, but the addition of the Magic Keyboard that really transformed what the iPad Pro could be. It made it significantly improved for productivity on top of already being the best tablet experience on the market. But if you're regular to my channel, you know the iPad Pro has just been one of my favorite media consumption devices and really one of my favorite devices from Apple, period. But I didn't upgrade last year because it just didn't do enough. So I'm hoping this is the year that we see more software innovation and the new features in iPad OS for the iPad Pro and then even more functionality for Magic Keyboard users. That's how they can kind of amp it up another level because the power of the A-Series chip inside hasn't even come close to being fully utilized for years, and I'm uh, still hoping. What, five years plus after the first iPad Pro came out? Now Apple will finally bring some of their top creative software to work natively on the iPad Pro in 2021. Maybe I should suggest some apps uh, you might recognize, such as Final Cut Pro or Logic. Because, you know, every year has been a big letdown for me in that area. Maybe 2021 changes that, but... Uh, I've stopped hoping. Now, Apple's also reportedly working on a new iPad mini that's expected to be released in March with an 8.4 inch display and smaller bezels, but will still retain the more traditional design with a forehead and a chin and a home button with touch ID. The iPad mini was refreshed in 2019 and it's always been this great deal at a lower price point to Apple's iPad lineup. And really that's another reason why the design is staying old school. Then there's another rumor from Mako Takara that an entry level iPad that's similar to the iPad Air 3 from 2019 is in the works for a low cost iPad with a 10.2 inch display, but thinner and lighter that could be coming out sometime later this year. So in case you might be overwhelmed with all these different iPad models, we got the Pros, the iPad, the iPad Air, the iPad mini. Uh, you're not the only one, but that's Tim Cook's strategy, an Apple device at every price point. So at least for this potential, March spring Apple event, we are expecting the new iPad Pros and a new iPad mini, but of course, none of this is official until it's official. All right, let's take a moment to thank Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. I used to do some of my work at cafes, but that's not happening anymore, and I'm drinking more coffee than ever at home to stay awake late at night and crank out those edits. Well, with Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's best local roasters. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and conveniently delivers it to your door. So here's how it works. Step one, take the quiz to answer questions about how you like your coffee. I'm not even a coffee junkie and Trade curated the matches just for me. Step two, choose your delivery frequency and it will appear at your door and delivered for peak freshness. Step three, you can rate your matches so Trade can continue to suggest coffees that you love. Now Trade uses compostable packaging to ship all of their coffee in. And one of the suggestions they sent me was the Diesel Dark Roast from Atomic Coffee Roasters. 
with its extra smokiness and Baker's chocolate notes to give it that extra oomph and it hit the spot while also keeping me alert. There's also a first match guarantee that you'll love your first coffee. If you don't, they'll ship you out a different bag for free. Now, my viewers will get 50% off their first bag when they sign up. Offer is valid for the first 100 people who click the link in the description. Just take the quiz, click the link in the description box, and enter the code TONG50. Free shipping is included, so check out Trade Coffee today. Okay, let's get back to what else we were expecting to see at the March slash spring event slash announcement slash product reveal or whatever you want to call it. The other product we're expecting is one of Apple's worst kept secrets of all time, Apple AirTags. Now, John Pross revealed what is believed to be the first look at an official rendering of the AirTags from Apple's own setup software that looks pretty much like his original renderings back in September, but now has even more detail. Now, we know that AirTags, they're similar to those tile tracking tags and will allow you to keep track of things like your wallet, keys, or backpack with notifications if you're separated from a tagged item. They're expected to be managed through a new items tab in the Find My app discovered by Mac Rumors. They'll support Apple's ultra wideband U1 chip to help you locate lost items with an air tag down to centimeters. So these are gonna be extremely accurate, plus Bluetooth LE for broader compatibility with other devices. Now they're also expected to use an augmented reality element to help you locate lost items and reports claim they will be equipped with a removable battery like the button cell batteries found in watches. And there will be accessories to let you put one in a pouch or cover and connect them to your car keychain. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've lost a little excitement about the AirTags, but they make a whole lot more sense to me when I start going out. In fact, we've known about AirTags for so long that Samsung released their own smart tag before Apple's and they will have their own ultra wideband version coming later this year as well. John Prosser recently updated us and told us that they are a go for March and we are expecting them to be part of this March spring product reveal. So right there, it would make for a pretty solid announcement from Apple, new iPad Pros and iPad mini and AirTags. That's a trio of products with so much more coming in the pipeline in 2021, especially, you know, I'm juiced for this, Apple's rumored Mac lineup, I mean, that's got me giddy for this year. But here's some of the outsiders that are looking in that might show up in March or sometime around the spring. And I'm gonna reach through the screen right now, okay? And use my Professor X like abilities. Okay, there we go. And I know what you wanna know about next. Hold on. You want to know about iCloud storage. No? that That's not what you were thinking because at least Jeremy in Texas was just thinking that. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Ugh. Ugh, gross, Jeremy. You're sick for that. Ugh. All right, but uh, let's talk about products. What about AirPods 3 and AirPods Pro 2? Apple's second gen AirPods Pro have been reportedly targeted to arrive as soon as April with a more compact design, according to Bloomberg, that completely eliminates the stem to have a more sleek earbud style design like Samsung's Galaxy Buds. Bloomberg says it's not a guarantee because the challenge is still keeping features like noise cancellation, transparency mode, and all the H1 chip benefits and things like spatial audio and handoff still working properly with just less real estate and more compact design. But I think the top priority needs to be an AirPods Pro design that actually stays in your ears. You know what I'm talking about. We also just saw the first purported look at the AirPods 3 in a recent video. You can check out the details by watching it on my channel. But the biggest change would be a design inspired by the current AirPods Pro with a smaller stem for the AirPods 3 because that won't be confusing to people at all. But um, there's no expectation that these will be ready for this March event. And the reality is that Apple can take its time with AirPods because these things are still selling like hotcakes and Apple is dominating the wireless headphone category by owning almost half of the entire market right now. That is domination. So I don't expect to see any AirPods in March, but you know, I could be wrong. Now we also saw the 2020 iPhone SE announced in mid-April last year, and this was a huge success. Could we see a new one this year? Well, it doesn't make sense since it's not the type of phone that requires a yearly update. They equipped the SE with the A13 Bionic chip, 4K video, portrait mode, photos, and more. It was extremely popular for that long time iPhone customer who's still comfortable with a touch ID button and then one hand use that. It could have even potentially taken sales away from the iPhone 12 mini. Now we've heard that Apple is working on a larger 5.5 inch iPhone SE since the new SE was announced last year. Those rumors have gone on for, I guess like a year, but I'm gonna say that we will not see this 5.5 inch in March either. 
I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it, it's going to happen. But finally, you might feel at home like Apple has completely forgotten about this thing because everyone keeps asking me about a new Apple TV. We've heard reports that 2021 will finally bring us a new Apple TV with an improved a12 bionic processor at the very least maybe an a13 and that would bring better performance and improve graphics for gaming there's also been rumors of a new version of the apple tv remote but we have no idea what changes it will make because i know i still lose mine all the time and then i hold it upside down half the time when i pick it up i guess that's a feature and then there's no reports if it will really bring other new stuff or maybe even adopt ultra wideband to act as a hub to help find devices around your home for better accuracy. I mean, if they want to connect it better to that ecosystem, that's one way to do it. But even after all these years, those improvements still aren't that compelling for me to get a new Apple TV 4K box. I mean, maybe they surprise us, but I'm going to say we don't see a new Apple TV at this event either. So then that really takes us back to the big three new iPad Pros, a new iPad mini, and the official launch of AirTags at the March event if there is an announcement based on everything we've heard so far. All right, thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Trade is giving anyone who clicks my link below 50% off your first bag when you enter code TONG50. Okay, everyone, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you want more Apple goodness, you can check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care and be safe. See ya.